In these problems, we've got some pretty complicated looking radical expressions. And what we want to do is simplify each of the terms here as much as possible, and hopefully come up with like terms that we can then add or subtract as the problem calls for. So let's see what we can do here. Uh, our first term, let's just take this a term at a time. We've got x times the square root of 54 times x times v squared. Well, this number, I don't think I can take the six, square root of 54 as a, as a whole number. So let's go ahead and factor that first. So I'm going to factor that as 9 times 6. That's 54. OK. And then we have x and we have v squared. All right. Now I think this is in a form where I can do something with it because I see a couple of perfect squares that I can pull out. I've got 9 and I've got v squared. If I pull out the 9, that becomes a 3. If I pull out the v squared, that becomes a v and all this stuff gets multiplied on to the x. So I'm going to write this as 3 times v times x, and that means this 9 goes away, and so does the v squared. What that leaves inside the radical sign is the 6 and the x, and I don't think there's anything else I can do with those. So we'll just leave that as it is. So that's our first term simplified as much as I could. Um, let's try the second term here. We've got negative 5v times the square root of 6x cubed. And actually, I'm going to write that x cubed, I'm going to factor it a little bit, as x times x squared. And then it should be obvious that I can pull out this perfect square, this x. So this x squared becomes an x. And I can rewrite this term as 5v times x times the square root of, and what's left here is just the 6x. And this is really nice because our like terms here, we have 3 vx squared of 6x and a negative 5 vx squared of 6x. So 3 minus 5 is a negative 2 vx square root of 6x. That is quite a bit more simple, even though it still looks kind of complicated, but quite a bit more simple than what we started with up here. Let's try another one like that. Okay, our first term here, we've got 2v squared times the square root of 6vy squared. So just looking at this, I, I can't really do anything with the 6 or the v, but the y squared, that comes out. Um, I can take the square root of y squared, making it uh, just a y. So to rewrite this, I would get 2v squared times y times the square root of 6v. So that's the first term simplified. Let's try the second term. Definitely going to have to do some factoring with the number here. And let me think about that first before I write it. So 96, that would be 2 times 48. Uh, and 48 is 3 times 16. So this would be 2 times 3 times 16. And I can definitely um, take the square root of 16. That's 4. The 2 and the 3 are going to have to stay there, so I might as well multiply those back together. So I'm going to rewrite 96 as 6 times 16. Okay, so let me just rewrite this um, second term. I've got a negative y, and then I've got the square root of 6 times 16. That's our 96. And the v to the fifth I'm going to rewrite as well as v times v to the fourth. And then I'm going to take the square root of 16, that's going to become 4 out here, and the square root of v to the 4th, that's going to become v to the 2nd out here. So I can rewrite this term out front as 4y, well, I could have put the v first, v to the 2nd times the square root of, and what's left inside is just 6v. And this is good because even though I wrote these um, variables backwards here, these are definitely like terms. We have a v squared y square root of 6v in both of them. So we have 2 v squared y square root of 6v's minus 4 v squared y square root of 6v. So this is going to be a negative 2 v squared y times the square root of 6v. All right, so that was some work with simplifying some pretty tough and complicated radical expressions.